So welcome to Yin Yoga practice today. Um, I really love our little weekly Yin Yoga because I really just think it's so important to look at all the different practices of yoga, not just to do only Kundalini Yoga or only Yin Yoga or only Vinyasa Yoga, but um, how amazing it is that we have so many different ways to practice. And we are not always the same. We don't always need the same. So we can really use um, these practices according to our moods. And um, today I want to do a yin yoga practice to lift your mood. And I want to focus on the liver meridian because the liver meridian is really what is associated with anger, frustration. And in a good way, it's associated with kindness. And, you know, these days are challenging for all of us. You guys in Europe are having another lockdown, really tough one. Um, I think in the States and some parts too. And, um, you know, we can get easily irritable because we're like maybe confined within our home with the people that usually we don't see them all day long. They go to work, but all of a sudden we're like all here together. And, you know, we can get irritable, not just right now, in general. And what we often do is we push those feelings away and we just let them boil inside. And what a beautiful practice we have with yoga to kind of connect to whatever emotions we have and to kind of step back a little bit and look behind them or welcome them in a, with a little bit more loving attitude, I should say. Plus, with yin yoga, we can really target a certain emotion by targeting a certain meridian. So that's why today's practice will be focused on the liver meridian. So I'd like you to close your eyes now and find a comfortable seat. And as always, take the first moments to become present. And what does that mean? It means checking in with yourself, with your body. There's always three layers, physical body, mental body, emotional body. And they're often doing their own thing, but they're of course all connected. And what connects us to these three parts is the breath. And when we shift the breath, we're able to also influence those three different layers in our body. So we, we can create space in the body, in the physical body, and this will shift and open the physical body. We can create space in our emotional body and maybe uh, in a sense that we feel, we watch emotions float by and we're not responding and reacting to every single emotion. And also when we breathe deeply, the mind kind of settles. Often when we're like really stressed out or very in our head, it also shortens our breath. So when we shift the breath, we also create a shift in the mindset. So as always in your yoga, really focus on nice, deep, long breath. I'll remind you, of course. Now releasing the shoulders even more, face really soft, let the eyes fall back into the socket. Just watch yourself now and it's sometimes nice to watch yourself from kind of like a bird's eye perspective as you're sitting there become aware of the space around you maybe feel a nice breeze of air touching your skin or the warmth of the air everything starts to soften and to settle and you're becoming already a little bit more relaxed. So just feeling your breath coming in and going out softly. So again, the flip side of anger is kindness. And if we can recognize that we are not our anger, we're just 
identifying with it in that moment with the state of anger or frustration or whatever emotion it is, then we can coexist with anger and that allows kindness to emerge. And then anger, like any other emotion, is just a little storm passing through and we are not reacting to it. Now slowly take your hands together in front of your heart. And rock a little bit back and forth, lengthens it really, really tall. And then we'll begin with one sound of OM. And let's make it a soft sound of OM. Nice big breath. Oh. And then slowly release and come onto your mat if you're not there already. More of speaking to myself. <laughs> and our first pose is one that's gonna already trigger some of you probably. We're gonna do a toe squat. So you're gonna tuck your toes and ideally you sit back onto the heels. With your toes tucked, you can spread the toes a little bit. Now I understand that for many of you, Maybe this is very, very sensitive. At any time, you can come a little bit forward and release, but really try actively to push the toes down and see if you can relax into it and close your eyes and breathe deeply here. You might know that all your meridians are starting in the feet, so this is actually a really great way to activate your whole body. And we're only going to be here for about two minutes. So at this point, one more minute. Shoulders relaxed, face soft. And it's also targeting the liver meridian because we're compressing the front of the anchor where the liver meridian goes along. And you can breathe deeply. Tough pose to start with. Twenty more seconds. You're doing great. And again, you can always make adjustments if you need to. Last ten seconds. Okay, and then slowly, not so bad at all, come forward and gently um, flip your feet and you can tap a little bit with your feet onto the mat, releasing. Good. Now I want you to sit back. This is the counter pose and to walk your hands back a little bit and lift your knees. So this is stretching now the front and releasing the pose we did before. And again, just breathe. We're only gonna be here very shortly <sighs> to release the energy to flow. Good, last big breath. And then slowly come back forward. Good, place your hands, tuck your toes and stretch out your legs and then look towards your hands and gently walk your feet all the way forward and we're coming into the first longer pose for three minutes we're going to stay in what we call dangling so two options you can be here with your hands on the floor and the knees a little bit bent or if that is too much you can also hold on to the elbows or if that feels still like it's pulling too much this is the modification elbows to the knees. Now, if you're folding forward in those three minutes, gradually see if you can sink deeper by straightening the legs a little bit more. So now we're going also into the back of the legs, hamstrings, eyes closed, breathing deeply. And when we work with the back of the legs, 
that's the urinary bladder meridian so now we're working with kidney and urinary bladder meridian at any time you can exhale through the mouth if you feel something gets too intense back off a little bit make sure your head is relaxed you can even shake it a little bit yes and no here you could also bring your arms behind your legs that's also a nice way to do it breathing deeply about one more minute so relax but anytime you feel too much throbbing in your head back off a little bit and bring the elbows to the knees so face completely soft also forward fold our last practice last week was all about forward folds and they're very um, nourishing because they help us to turn inward okay last 20 seconds big 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 breath good all right and then release by slowly shaking out your arms and rolling yourself up to stand take a moment here Let the shoulders relax and then bring your feet hip distance and come down into a squat and you are absolutely welcome if you need to to place something underneath your buttocks. What we wanna do with the squat is you wanna bring the elbows to the inside of the legs and gently push against them so that you get a stretch in the inner thighs. It's also beautiful, you have no block. It's a beautiful pose to release the lower back. And when you close the eyes, just breathe deeply into the belly. gentle push out against the inner knees and we're here only for two minutes so again just watching where does your mind go When you catch yourself drifting away, can you bring yourself back by focusing on your breathing and the sensations in your body? So maybe focusing on the toes touching the mat, on the warmth between your palms, nice and gentle, almost there. 30 more seconds about. That's kind of hot in the legs. Just feel, notice if you need to make adjustments at any time you can. Deepen your breathing for the last moment. Good, and then slowly release your hands to the floor for a moment. Walk your hands forward a little bit. You get a nice stretch in your back. Take a nice big breath in, exhale through the mouth. 
and then walk your hands back and slowly lift back up and come back into dangling so we we'll repeat this sequence this time we're dangling only for two minutes so once again see if maybe this time you are able to straighten the legs a little bit more and you can still do the modification or grab your elbows or bring the fingertips to the floor whatever works most important Stay connected to your breath. Sensations. Where does your mind go? Beautiful, you guys. And let the head hang. These forward folds are also good because they bring the head below the heart usually the head is always in charge so now we're shifting that a little bit so it's really good well also it's like half an inversion so we're reversing blood flow and that's very good too last 30 seconds straighten your legs as best as you can maybe a little bit more intensify the stretch Great, right, take your last three breaths. And then very slowly lift your head and then come back down into your squat. So again, feel free to use a block or something underneath bring the palms together gently push out against the inner knees breathe eyes completely soft stay in the moment maybe again focus on air touching your skin or the warmth anything that keeps you in this moment present. Beautiful. So this is soft. Maybe another big breath in and exhale through the mouth. Very, very good. Last three breaths here. And then you can slowly come to sit. Ooh, good one. And as you come to sit, straighten your legs in front of you. Shake them out. And then use your hands to come up. Massage, move energy, release. Good. Great. Cross your ankles, roll over your legs, and come onto your hands and knees. 
knees are about hip distance apart hands go underneath your shoulders and we're gonna release a little bit with uh, moving the spine so two options you can just go cat cow inhaling and then exhaling or if you want to have a little bit more movement feel free to move in any way like maybe circles or maybe a figure eight that is an option too anything goes this is your practice always a beautiful opportunity connecting with yourself what it is right now that you need and then come back into an arched back with the inhale and as you exhale now sit back into a child's pose and let your arms rest forward or if you want a little release for the chest and the shoulders you can bring your palms together like prayer hands and behind your head we're just doing this as a transition to the next pose So a couple of really nice deep 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 breaths into your lower body go back And you just keep breathing. I hope that the sound is getting better. I don't know why it's not so good. <laughs> Trying to fix it. all right from child's pose keep your legs where they are and bring your hands back forward coming up now bring your knees all the way to the edge of the mat and now you have two options option number one it's called tadpole and you have the feet together but the knees really wide and you sit back and it goes a little bit more into the hips or the other option would be to come into frog pose and then you would have your legs really really wide and the knees and the ankles in one line i hope you can see that and you lean forward a little bit and then stick your butt back a little bit so you choose this can be very intense on the knees on the inner knees you could use some padding some pillows if you want if it's totally too much for you just go really really wide with your knees and keep your feet together and just come here and you can also come up with your hips actually a little bit i'll show it from the side so one option knees wide and you're here but the feet are together other option is you open the feet into the frog and you push the hips a little bit back i promise this will be the only really uncomfortable pose today three minutes here frog or tadpole alternative if it's too intense stay in child's pose that's totally fine Breathing deeply. So 
So this is also one of the poses that can actually trigger a little bit of frustration or anger. So when that comes up, notice. And it's part of the practice. We actually want that because if we keep pushing it down and pretend it doesn't exist, it will always find its its ways to get our attention. So if we have a practice like this where we're welcoming these kind of emotions, that's the way we can also then acknowledge them and let them go. So life is not just good vibes, happy experiences. That's the yin and yang. We do have frustration, anger, disappointment. And we only use the yoga to skillfully or more skillfully maybe navigate these challenges in everyday life. One more minute here, you guys, you're doing great. Remember to breathe deeply. And then take your last three breaths. And very slowly come all the way back up. Good job. When you come up, really take your time. Don't rush anything. Place your hands back underneath your knees. Walk your knees again closer so that they are underneath your hips. Straighten your right leg behind. Stretch it out. And then do the same with your left leg. Push it back. Straighten it. Nice. And then straighten both legs and find a downward facing dog. And it's always nice to just release a little bit here so you can bend both knees, stick your butt up. Inhale, rock forward, shoulders over your wrist, exhaling back, knees bend, stretch. And then again, inhaling forward. And the last time. Exhaling back, stay here, press into your hands, let your head go, and really stretch. Good. Float your left leg up into the sky now and shake it out. You could even make circles, anything feels good. Bring your left knee forward, and we're coming into the sleeping swan. If you have trouble with your knee, injuries, or simply want to do the modification, give me a second, I'll show it to you. Those of you wanting to come into the full pose, feel free to place a pillow, blanket, whatever underneath your left hip. There should be no sensation or pain in the knee. That's really important. If your body wants to fall over to the left cheek, that's fine. You're gonna walk your hands back, sit really nice and tall. And then next here, walk your hands forward and fold into your sleeping swan. The modification looks like this. You lie on your back. You bring your left foot above the right knee. You clasp your hands in front of the right shin. You feel the stretch already in the left outer hip. You can bring your tailbone a little bit more down towards the floor and to intensify the stretch, you can rock a little bit more over to the right and breathe here. So this one is gonna be the longest one. We are holding it for five minutes. 
it can trigger as well lots of emotions because the hips are just a place where we have tension, where we hold. So, close the eyes, breathe. Notice when your mind starts traveling, always come back to the breath and the sensation in your body. We're about half time, so you have a little bit over two minutes left. Also become aware of the patterns of your mind. Where does your mind like to go? I know my mind likes to always plan in the future. I always have to-do lists rather than dwelling in the past. I have conversations that I'm about to have with people in my mind, things like that. So it's quite interesting to see where your mind likes to go usually. Notice the little stories or repetitive thoughts. <clears throat> yeah. And it's basically the practice to then guide your mind where you like it to be so guide your mind into presence you can also use a mantra if you want a mantra could be on the inhale i am here now and on the exhale something like i'm letting go of what i don't need any longer if you like to use mantras. <sighs> Exhaling through the mouth always is a great option too. And then take your last three breaths on this side. Prepare to come out of the pose really slowly. If you're lying on your back, it's easy. You're just um, 
releasing and rocking a little bit side to side like windshield wipers. If you are in the full swan, you slowly walk your hands back, you tuck your toes, and then you lift your left leg all the way up into the sky and shake out. And then release the left foot down and maybe walk your feet in place. And then inhale, your right leg lifts up, exhale, right knee comes to the outside of your right hand and we're coming into the sleeping swan on this side if you're lying on the back for the modification. Very easy, right foot over left knee. You know what you have to do if you're in the full pose, if your hip wants to fall to the right, let it happen and then when you feel ready, to release, walk your hands forward and fold. Here's the difference on this side, very often we have imbalances in the hips, so that's normal. You have all the tools, find a mantra or stay present. Focus on breathing, you can even do a humming breath, which is also nice. With the humming breath, you would just inhale and as you exhale, make the sound of a bee with your throat and it's like, which can be calming, soothing, and also helps to stay present and focused. So just open your little toolbox and see what works for you.
last 30 seconds. Slowly prepare for getting out of the pose. And then if you're lying on your back, just release the right foot and hug the knees to your chest and move a little bit like windshield wipers. If you're in the full pose, slowly walk your hands back, tucking your left toes. Swing your right leg all the way up into the sky and shake it out. Nice. And release the right foot down. Good. All right. So we're in for another little challenge, but not for a long time. We're coming into a little dragon pose now because this is stretching now again the front of your hips. So inhale, lift your left leg up, step your left foot forward and drop your right knee down. Now, I recommend placing something underneath your right knee and then to have blocks or whatever you need to support you. And I'll show you the different options. Let me put the timer out first. So option number one, you have the block between or in the inside of your left foot and you can let the foot either fall out a little bit so you're on the edge of the left foot or you can keep the foot pressing down. If this feels too much, another option would be to have your arms on top of the knee. So the targeted area is the front line of your right thigh. If you want to go really deep, you could also come down onto your elbows if that's available to you. Mainly focus on the front of your right thigh to release towards the floor. Three minutes here. You can also take two blocks, for example, and be somewhere here and push down into the blocks with your hand again or here. It's good to release the back knee onto a pillow so it's a little bit softer. And this is also a pose where you are allowed to bring your left knee a little bit further in front of the ankle because then it also stretches the back of your foot. Breathing deeply. I find this also not an easy pose, but it's really deeply nourishing for the liver meridian as well. And opening, creating space in the front of your hip, hip flexors, etc. Soas muscle. Breathing deeply, half time already. Good. Last 30 seconds, breathe deeply. Maybe you have some nice music that helps you to soften. Maybe you come back to your mantra. <sighs> Good. 
great. And then prepare to come out. And like with every yin pose, it's really important to transition very gently and slowly. So you don't want to just slide the foot back and you want to first really press down into the hands, see, and then very, very slowly I sit back and then I slide my left foot back so I can come into downward facing dog. I roll the pillow over to the other side for my left knee and then take a moment here very slowly walk your feet in place so you're releasing. Take a moment here, breathe, feel the difference. Maybe there's a difference between left and right, more space on the right. And when you're ready, bring your left knee to the floor and step your right foot forward. And we'll come into dragon on the right and you choose your variation. Time is up. Take some moment to find your pose, support your knee. Maybe both hands on blocks. Maybe the foot falls out to the side so that you're more on the outer edge of the foot. Maybe you come onto the knee. So these are the different variations. Focus on the left front thigh. Becoming aware of sensations, how energy flows, becoming aware of thoughts, emotions, everything's flowing through you like a river, like water. We already have half time. So keep breathing. Remember to close your eyes. One more minute to go. And when we close the eyes, it's easier because we're not stimulated by our senses. Beautiful, last 30 seconds. Hang in there. Yeah, smile. Exactly. Nice, Laura. As they say, this too will pass. All the intensity. Good. Slowly prepare yourself to get out of the pose. And remember, you want to come out by pushing into your hands and lifting from your hips, just sliding back a little bit so that there's no pressure. Great, you guys. And then press your hands down, tuck your toes, lift up and back once again, downward facing dog. And gently walking your feet in place. And then slowly walking your feet forward and coming to sit. And then coming to lie on your back. Good. Oh. And as you lie on your back, hug the knees into the chest, walk a little bit back and forth. And we're going to stretch it out a little bit with dynamic bridges. So feet hip distance, stretch out your arms as you inhale, lift the arms up and back. 
and as you exhale, release. And then again, inhaling, lifting up, and exhaling to release. Last one, inhale, lifting up, and exhaling, release. Beautiful. Knees to your chest, hands on top of the knees, make circles moving the knees away from each other. And then moving the knees towards each other. Good. And then keeping the knees hugged in, take your arms out to the side. You might want to take a pillow or something between the knees. I always love that. Inhale as you exhale. Let the knees fall over to the left. Your head can either look up or over to the right. Sometimes if your back is a little sensitive, you might want to put an extra block underneath the knees so they don't go all the way to the floor. You can play with bringing the knees higher or lower. Again, this is your practice. You decide. Remember to stay with your breath. Nice, full, deep, deep breath. Remember a mantra or breathing or just observing sensations. Two more minutes here. Notice how maybe at this point it's a little easier for you to stay present. Notice if that may have shifted since the beginning. Maybe the mind has settled.
So then we'll take the last three breaths here. <sighs> With your third breath, squeeze the pillow or whatever you may have between your legs or just the legs together and very slowly inhale, bring the knees back up to the middle. Just place the feet to the floor for a moment so you can windshield wiper, which neutralizes your spine. Do this very, very slowly, slightly. And then when you feel ready for the other side, slowly let your legs fall over to the right. And find the perfect position for the twist on this side. Yeah, be comfortable, maybe use something underneath your head even, or place something additional underneath your right knee. Remember, if you are not fully comfortable, like if you're cold or if something is pulling somewhere in your body, you will never be able to fully relax your mind. So whatever you need to do, go ahead and do it. If your mind travels, come back maybe to sensations. Bringing awareness into your right hand or your left hand or the wind, the air touching your skin. That always helps. Last minute, deep breathing. And then take your last three breaths here. Yeah. Slowly getting ready to lift the legs back up. And when you have lifted your legs, remove the pillow from in between, place your feet to the floor 
And once again, windshield wiper your legs. Okay, now for the last pose, it's gonna be a short pose, but to release the lower back, you can either just do it if you don't have any props, you can just lie on your back and lift your legs. You can also do that against the wall. Or if you have a block, you can lift the block underneath your sacrum and lift the legs. And it's nice, sometimes the edge of the block gives a little massage. Or you could even, for a deeper one, place the block higher and lift the legs up. So most important is to get a sense of gravity, just releasing your back towards the floor. Legs are completely relaxed. You're releasing the back of the legs hamstring. Just stay here and breathe deeply. Or maybe another 30 seconds or so. Right. Beautiful. And take one more big, big breath in. Exhale through the mouth. Slowly bend the knee. And then find your way into Shavasana. And if there's anything your body calls for before Shavasana, another twist or forward fold or whatever, feel free to do it. Otherwise, just lie on your back, slide the pillow out, maybe place a blanket or pillows underneath your knees. That's always really good. And then make sure you're warm and cozy. And then enjoy and release into Shavasana. Maybe roll your head once again from side to side. Make sure there's no tension in the neck. Maybe tuck the shoulder blades a little closer. Heart nice and open, inhale and exhale through the mouth. Enjoy.
slowly begin to deepen your breathing. Very gently move your finger, remove your toes. And stretch your arms over your head. Giving yourself a good long stretch. And then bending your knees, gently rocking side to side. And then coming to rest on your left side, your yin side. When you feel ready, I hope you can hear the bird. Uh, when you feel ready, slowly find your way back up into a nice, comfortable seat. Keep the eyes closed. So remain in that soft yin space, energy. And feel the effects of the practice. Notice where can you release even more these last moments. And then take your hands together in front of your heart. And every time we come onto the mat, it's an opportunity to connect deeper to ourselves, but it's also really claiming our own power, tapping into our own wisdom, the intelligence of the body is really such an incredible system. And when you think of how many things regulate themselves without you really consciously doing anything about it, and your body will always search to create balance. Yeah, it doesn't matter how much we throw it off, it'll always bring you back to its balance. So understanding this like with practices like yin yoga is really fascinating to me and beautiful. So give yourself a little thank you here for showing up today on your mat, making the time in your busy day. I really appreciate it too. And let's close and see it with one last sound of OM. Nice big breath in. Oh. So may you all benefit greatly from this practice. But really pay attention what comes to throw you off next time and know that whenever there's anger, frustration, that you have the power or the knowledge to maybe take just a step back, pause, breathe, and let the storm pass before it throws you off. And sometimes it'll work and sometimes it won't, and that's just life. Thank you so much for joining me today. Have a beautiful rest of your day. Namaste. Thank you. Mm -hmm.